vlog Tykes TV. As always, it's Neil and we've got Ryan the bearded tyke on. Uh, Ryan, as always, mate, a pleasure. Uh, we'll talk about your journey and that uh, yesterday. So we'll get back to Friday night quickly. Uh, we had school predictions, we're all going like, you know, 3 1 2 0 4 1 and end up being a draw. But we'll we'll pick through that. Uh, just want us to thanks to Ollie. Uh, and Caleb as well for Friday Night Live. Yeah. Um, we did uh, spot on, raised some few questions, and also uh, Julian messaged me as well uh, directly after watching video. A few questions and, well, wanting me to get more involved in certain things with youngins. Uh, want to see more at youngins. So, again, yeah. we'll uh, we'll see what uh, comes to that. But like, like I said, like I said on Friday night, nearly in, in group chat, I think it's really important we hear from the from from young fans. Yeah, I think we forget, and, and we should, absolutely shouldn't forget that these these young fans are the next generation of of Barnsley fans, and then taking their kids, and you can't have these generational gaps. And I think we try and listen to fans' views, but it always seems to be the adults. Mm. We need to be listening to the younger generation. We need to be listening to them. And what they think, because it's it's you know their view is just as important as as ours, in my opinion, anyway. Yeah, I mean, I've been, I've been trying to do it for ages, uh, but obviously you'll know this for your son and that we get football practice and football games, yeah. and I do a Friday night live, and sometimes it's a bit, you know, touch and go whether they, you know. Uh, one can make it, let alone three, because of the time of coming in and everything. And I totally get it with parents and that, you know. And it just ticked a box where it was. If I just shifted uh, live to instead of seven to eight o'clock, it gave them a bit more breathing space, and it actually worked. But well, yeah, yeah I'm, I've been trying to do that for a bit. Like like you just said, Vier is that all these fans forums and the so-called fan advisory board and that. Like I said, listen to the like. No respect, but us as adults, the older generation, like what you said, Via, and that's why my message we're trying to get across is that the youngins coming through now, they they are. If there's none at youngins coming through, there's going to be no support for club. It's, it's, it's going to basically die in its ass, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah, going to be a generational gap, mate. Because yeah, you know, we, you know, I don't, I don't know if it was the same for you, but you know, it, it weren't my dad that brought me; it was my uncle that took me to football. Same, yeah. And, it, and it's and then you know and then I came with you know with my cousins and then now I go and I fall in love with the club and I keep going and then when I have my kids they come with me and that's how it works isn't it? Mm. it's like a continual mm. a continual thing from generation to generation and if we don't appease appeal to, to to young fans and we don't listen to them you know I think you, you'd run a chance of, um, yes. of having that generational gap and 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 then it's and then it you know you, you might never recover from it so it's like I said. Their fans are just the same as everybody else, just the same as all of us, and their their views are should be should be listened to, and you know their worries, their concerns, what what they think, their ideas, and things like that should all be all should should all be listened to. So, I think it would be a great idea, mate, and you should, you should do, I think you should do it more often. Yeah, I'll try and do it more often. And what were an eye wa eye water for me? Well, a bottle of soft drink oasis and a bag of sweets, seven pound eighty. I'm like, wow, Jesus. Mate, I don't. I don't I, I'll be honest with you. I don't buy any. I don't buy any sweets at ground. You know, little corner shop on well. Yeah, yeah. We always nip, we we just nip in there, mate. Yeah, it's that's what Ed said. He, he does that. Yeah. yeah, we just yeah. nip in there. I've been well, well was full for thought for club from this, yeah. you know. So I always drive, and when we're singing and shouting and carrying on, I always get really dry. I get, get, get start getting an idiot and get really dry mouth. But I'm not paying three pound bottle of water. No, I can go get exactly the same bottle of water for a quid from shop. Yeah. Not way down, you know what I mean? It's 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 a bit daft, isn't it? Yeah. Right. So we'll get back to the game. Uh, Cambridge United after match thoughts, match reaction. Uh, start 11, we, we were a bit of debate about this and all overnight when we are on about who was going to be coming in. I thought Matthew Craig might have come in. Yeah. Um, obviously, for Luke O'Connell, we serving a suspension. And fair play, he didn't put look Matthew Craig in at all. He, uh, yeah, you know, what is in, which after a few minutes, like I went off injured. But looking on paper, looking at that though, uh, Ryan, it, it looked a fairly attacking starting 11, if I'm being honest. Yeah, I mean, I can't really fault him for, for, for you know, I thought, I thought, I mean, Matthew Craig seemed to be the obvious choice. Mm. I mean, he's not coming on as a sub at the minute, is he? And he's not, no. and he, and he, and he's not starting, so something's not right there. And I think, you know, I think we saw in Matthew Craig's performances before he got dropped were, well, they weren't great, were they? Mm. Uh, he started off really well and sort of tailed off. So, you know, something's clearly, something that Daryl Clark seen that he's not, either not trusting completely or, or whatever, or he, or he just feels as though players can do a better job. Yeah. Um, so, 
Yeah, I mean, I really like the three four three four three four three formation that he's going with. It's it's mm. it's, it's, it's it's very attacking, and you know, I, I had no problems with, it, with the changes that he, that he made really. But then, obviously, unfortunately, Max had to go off, and this were really telling is when Max had to go off. He said, "Then you're thinking, oh, is he going to bring?" And he's he's then changing the formation round, so yeah. bring another midfielder in. Yeah, and and when the, uh, when uh, when Kalecha came on. Uh, it's just, it's new Akali's surname. I, I keep mixing his new Akali. Yeah, yeah. Akali yeah. came. I keep yeah. mixing his surname and his first name all yeah. the time. So it, it is. Is when um, when new Akali came on, he went into that pivot role, didn't he? He went into the seat into Luca's role, and that was quite telling on what he had a great game and all. He, he had a great game, mate. He was superb. But it's quite telling from what Dal Clark must be thinking about Matthew Craig, because if he's wanting to go to that and go to a CDM there, mm. I think. I've had a bit chance he, to. You yeah. thought he'd have put him in if he were going to be putting him in, but he didn't. He put he put Noah Cali in, and I, I, personally, I've got no problem with that because he's a, he's our own player. Mm. And if and if if Daniel Clark feels that our own player is better than the loan player, then I've always said this: unless your loan player is significantly better than what you've got, mm. you'll always be developing your own squad, not someone else. You know, should be yeah, yeah, player. So, <clears throat> but I have to say, he came on mate, and he he was outstanding, outstanding. Everything went through him. So, I mean, we, we conceded early doors. Uh, what frustrated for me, and I watched it back, and I watched it back, is that we should have cleared it. We should have revolved it out to give me silly dallying it on edge. But again, it seems to be get for me. It seems to be in slow motion. I don't know why. It seems to be so slow motion. I'm thinking it's against the hundred feet. It's trying to play out. I don't know why trying to do this all fit, but we worked it in. Deflection off a uh, Russell. I mean, Killip had no chance. He was totally wrong footed. For me, he had no chance with that. And I thought, no way. It's like the watch is going off, you know, early doers and people saying, oh, it must be tactical or it's an injury. It turns out, but it was an injury after the game. And I'm yeah. thinking, oh, where do we go from here? Because is it going to be one of them days? And it ended, I think, I think it did. We'll, we'll get on about later on. Yeah. But after that, when we conceded early doers, the quality came on. And I'm thinking, back of my mind, well, right, are we going to approach this game like now? Are we going to just up to it on break? Are we going to just soak it up? And I don't know. I, I didn't know how we were going to play when the Kyler came on because I'm a bit like you, is that where's he going to sit? Where's he going to play? Um, but as the game went on, Jesus Christ, I thought it was immense. His range of passing, unbelievable, mate. Yeah. Unbelievable. And... Umphrey's, <laughs> jeez, where they picked it up and where it's going, I'm thinking, pass it, pass it, pass it to Keeler Dunn. Pa Keeler Dunn's up, and he's going and going, I'm thinking, he's gonna, it's either going to sky it, slice it or whatever, but what a finish again by Umphrey's, mate. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That absolutely. Quality, that mate. was just sheer power, mate. Sheer power. He, he picked that ball up and he's gone, and he's gone pretty much in a straight line. Yeah. Absolutely outpowered that defender. He's outpaced him. He's just because he's such a unit, and then just absolutely thundering a shot. And keeper's got no chance. Mm. He's passed him before he knows it. He's passed him before he knows what he's done. Um, so I mean, absolutely outstanding again. He's just he's just a great player. You know, I mean, I'm so I'm so I'm, I don't know. I'm so pleased that he's at our club. I'm surprised he weren't picked up as a free agent. Well, were any, were there any point? Right, right. right. You know, when you're watching it, what were there any point? But you were thinking. Pass it, pass it. Or do you think no, he's going to oh, take yeah. it? Oh, yeah. Oh, no, yeah. I thought he should have passed it. I thought he should have passed it. Kayla Dunn were in so much space. Mm. But then to, have it, to, have the, to have the bottle to think to take yeah. the other option and just go around outside of that. And that number two, that I think he's, you know, I, I can't admit. I think he had a better. decent game as well. He really, mate, he were right in front of yeah. the first half because we were right at the front um, where, where the, the way ended. Because it's on the side now in the standing area. So we're right mm. at the front, so we were right on us. And everyone was saying, God, he's, he's decent, this lad. He's yeah. really tricky. He, he, were, he were causing Gent some problems down that side. I thought, although yeah. I, thought, I thought Gent did really well, but he were really tricky. He were fast. He were, he, he were in the face, but Umps just went straight past him, mate. Just yeah. powered, powered past him, and there were nothing stopping him. And then the shot with his weaker foot again. Yeah. Again. Yeah. Two in a row with his weaker foot, mate. You wouldn't know that with his weaker foot. And he's given it and he's thundered it in, and, you know. But well, I mean, it's a great, it's a great goal. It's a great. It's, even Sky Sports Book Four put it out on their on their social saying, "What a goal!" You know. Yeah, I mean? they did. So, yeah, and uh, when you watch it back a few times and all, with power in it, there's also a bit of a 
a bend in the curve and it with it goes out of him, comes back in again. If you watch yeah. it a few times, it, oh, like I said, on his weak foot, yeah, ends up against Wigan. You know, his ex club on Saturday. Oh, he's going to be up yeah. for that. Oh, he's going to be up for that. I hope so. Uh, <laughs> so, first half, one apiece. Second half, I'm thinking more or less the same. Uh, I don't know about you, Ryan, but all the way through the game, I didn't even know that Alan Phillips were playing, mate. No, like uh, I, it, it would. It, but both him and DKD um, yeah. were very at times crazy. missing. At time, yeah, missing. Adam Phillips started to get more into the second half. He, he, he did. He could he, he, he come into it a lot more in the second half, but it was just a bit. It was a bit. I thought the whole first half were a bit flat, Neil. It weren't. Mm. It weren't poor. I'm not going to go as far to say it were. It were poor because it weren't poor. You know, we had a moment of brilliance. You know, John Russell had that really good shot. Yeah, I think yeah. That once I think that once Newa Carla came on, we, we looked we looked significantly better than what we'd start. We're a bit all over the place to start. We won't we? I know their goals. I mean, it's to be you know their goal where they've gone at. Um, I know a lot of have a go at MDG, but he's he always does that, mate. He always when mm. he gets into them positions there, he tries to go push it out wide and go down line. Yeah, he very rarely comes back to the keeper. I know he were in a deep position, so he's just trying to do what he normally does. He hadn't dealt with it brilliantly, but I think they're like people blame completely blaming him for goal. Were a bit, it's probably a bit harsh. Mm. But and then it's just a, it's just a really look. You know, the deflection is just a really, it's yeah, just really lucky. You know, one, 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 one win a lot. You got to buy a ticket, haven't you? Yeah. I think the fall first half were a bit flat, but um, although there were some moments in there, but in the second half we've come out and and then I thought we saw sort of Adam Phillips and DKD come back into it a little bit more. Um, and I think Phillips had two really good chances that it, the header should be scoring. Header, yeah. The the the, the one where Umps is putting through and he's trying to rifle it in bottom corner. I agree with that. Like, it's just yeah. so close. You, yeah, I agree. You know, it's, it's one of them. You, should he be scoring? No, but it's a re, it's a really tough chance. And if you look where the keeper dives, I think it'd have been on target. The keeper probably might have had it. Mm. Um, but the header, that what a ball by O'Keefe, by the way. What a yeah. ball. Um, he did two really good. He won one for DKD as well. He had another good game, did Corey. But he put a ball in that should be going in. So yeah, he could, he come into it a bit second half, mate. But it would have been them two, especially. I think Phillips and, and DKD were a bit quieter than usual, shall we say? Yeah, I mean second half for me. I'm thinking what, surely one of these got to go in. I think Russell scored, but it were ruled offside. All switching posts as well. I thought well, like you know, what it offside. It were one of them. Some people said it were tight. Some have been good, but again, at the end of the day, you just got to go with how it goes. But yeah. amount of chances what we had, amount of chances, and I'm like, just go. I mean, for one, I think it was from Humphreys where uh, Stevens, their keeper, more squirmed it and literally it crossbound just went over. Yeah. Like, went, I'm like, yeah. oh Jesus, it's not going to be our day. And I think the only thing I was surprised about in the second half is that, and we're going to get on about this about squad depth and stuff like that because there's been a lot of men on socials about doom and gloom here we go again we're back to and we're on about it off air if we'd have scored one of them goals it wouldn't have been that but I'm surprised in a way that someone like Jallo didn't come on for either uh, DKD yeah. or Phillips just that bit of pace does that say a lot about the were Daryl thinking no these are out here good enough to do this or because I'm 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 in a game like that, and I'm thinking we're not in the centre, and we're taking it to, and there's ch- chances happening. Is Jaro that kind of man to go up and win you in a game? Possibly with his pace running at him, yeah. Yeah. Maybe score a goal. But then you look elsewhere, is there anybody else we can come off at bench? No, quite they did, you know. Uh, Cosgrove's still like injured. Were there any real game changes apart from like probably Jallo? I think we probably and Aquali who came on earlier. I think others would have been more as light for light kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's difficult, isn't it? Because he's, he's done this in the last few games. It's worked really well for us where he's not made loads of substitutions. And I don't mm. think it should be a prerequisite to have to make five substitutions in a game just, oh, no, because, no. just, just because you can. You know, for me, yesterday, probably it could have brought Jallo on. Um, 10, 15, 15 minutes, minutes because mm. DKD want he wanted the races yesterday. Um, mm. Unfortunately, you know he's been brilliant for us, but he just he just he just weren't his day yesterday. So maybe Jallo on for that. But as a whole, Neil, I don't really have a problem with him not bringing subs on because you know if you looked at the way the game were going, 
although the goal did it sounds daft, but the goal didn't come, but it was coming. Mm. It was coming. We were playing well in that second missed half. Missed chances, we were wasn't it? Yes. The missed chances were frustrating. Um, you know, but their keeper's made he's made a good save from um from Noah Carly, he's made a great save from Stephen Humphreys when he's um when he's drilled one in and he's full stretch and he's palmed it, is that that was a fantastic save. Mm. But really low down to his right, it's a, it's a really good save. You know, we've had some two chances um from Phillips. We've had the one um where he squirmed it, the keeper squirmed it yeah. and it hit from from um from Humphreys. Uh, DKD's header that uh, I'm not sure how he missed it. He just, played. <laughs> he just yeah. Put it, I think he put it further over. He couldn't put it further off if he tried. But mm. um, so it, it will come in. So it's like sometimes in the squad, it's not necessary to make uh, you know to make the changes if if it's going well and if you're playing well. And I think just in the last few games, the team that he's put out there, I've played really well. I've played really well. Um, so it's like why change it for sake mm. of changing it? You know, mm. if it's going if it's going well, all these I'm sure these lads are all fit enough to do ninety minutes, no dramas. Mm. But yesterday, probably, yeah, I think he could have maybe brought Jallo on for either DKD or Phillips, um, just to, just to try and get that goal, just to try and do something a bit different. But it, it's not like we were playing poor, Neil. We weren't playing poorly. We, no. we we actually played really well in that second half. We played some really nice football, and we we were on top, mate. But Cambridge rolling on, you know, holding on for dear life. And on another day, that's three or four one easy, and nobody and nobody's upset online, are they? Nobody's coming out with silly, I mean, silly stuff online about here we go again, it's crap and all this sort of stuff. I thought, I thought that's a bit. I thought that would have been. Listen, everyone's entitled to their opinion. I just thought it would have been harsh. I were at the game and mm. I didn't see that really, apart from a flat first half, but not a poor. It was just a bit flat. Yeah, needed but, a spark. Yeah, so we played. I thought we played really. We did everything, but but but, but score and we should you know, on another day that's a comfortable win mate I mean we, 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 you know we've been critical we've called it out earlier on, on this channel about Daryl Clark making all sell changes what's cost us games and stuff like that which yeah. we have done and you know and, and I keep going back to this we uh, Radio Sheffield phoned me up to go on and I, I, I phoned up and wanted to know what season review so far and I said I think the international break to a week actually worked wonders for us yeah. Um, because after that, I think it was Blackpool away, and we sent to I think it's five unbeaten now <clears throat> for Barnsley. And I think whether there's been clear the air talks or whether there's been like a, a meeting with everybody and say, Look, this is a purpose, this is where we need to go. Everybody seems to be on board with it, they seem to be playing with a purpose and a lot more, um, uh, putting in an individual performance in as uh, as well as a team performance. I can see that on pitch. And also, uh, on the backs of the substitutions, I also think that is probably Daryl Clark's learnt as well. He doesn't have to make all seal changes to win a game when it's not needed. And again, you know, we're all human, we all make mistakes, we all, all learn from him. And I think Daryl has learned from him that the starting eleven like now, albeit probably one or two players still, have cemented their this name on team sheet for every week, every game. And I think, <clears throat> you know, you're going back, yeah, probably before Blackpool game or maybe for a Blackpool game and it were, you know, a lot were made about his goalkeeper, for instance. Yeah. And everybody's like saying, oh, we've got to bring back his keeper, what's out on loan, Smith. Um, oh, don't put Killip in, Killip's no good, blah, blah, blah. I'm not being funny enough, but since Killip's been in after uh, Gabby Selina, he hadn't done really out wrong. If I was like, it, it, it's, been, it's, been, it's been brilliant. He made, he made an absolute another blinding save. <clears> a <throat> staff from that header at one off. They, they, they put this, yeah. I think I yeah. think it was a corner. I think a corner across, but they put a really good header in, and all, all, they thought it were in. The Cambridge fans, they were they, they were up cheering, and he's and he's put he's got right down to his right and and and, and send it away. So mm. I can't fault Killip's performance, mate. No. He's getting ball. See what I really like about him as well. He's getting the ball moving really quick. Yeah. Yeah, he's not asking about with it. His, his, his distribution's a lot better than Gabby's. What well, you know, yeah. we, we, we know that Gabby's kicking were really poor, but also he just gets at ball and we, we, we're getting really frustrated with him not releasing it. Mm. And he's releasing it really quick a lot of the time, just you know, rolling it out to, to, to one of the to one of the wing backs and, get, and getting on with it. Yeah, go in. And I think that's what certainly earlier in the season and certainly last season under Neil Collins was that we just weren't getting going again and trying to turn mm. trying to turn teams round. Um, you know, just just holding on to the ball and starting slow front back, and we, we, we certainly since international break, we've not seen we've not seen any of that, man. And I can't no. I can't fault. 
he's Killing Kill number one at the minute. He's not doing anything yeah. to be dropped. He's not done anything worthy of being even getting anywhere near to bit anyone thinking anyone else coming in. His performances have been fine. He's not conceded many goals at all. Mm. I've taken no issue at all. I don't know about you. No, I, no, I completely agree, mate. That's why I mentioned it before. Complete, uh, I thought... complete revelation. I think last season we thought we saw him, and without being poor, he, he weren't the best. Mm. Um, but I think there's quite a, a number of players that we've seen improve significantly since Daryl Clark's come in. Well, you know, you, you just know, for the keep, we 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 signed the oh, I'm terrible with names the 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 keeper the, the goalkeeping coach that were brought in. Yeah, Bittner. Yeah, Should've I was done. about to mention that. Yeah, Bittner. She brought Bittner in as a goalkeeping coach and yeah. he must have like seen Summit and all being well up tonight, so it's working. Yeah, yeah, I can't, I can't fault it, mate. I can't fault it. Long may, again, long may that continue. Keep it, you know, I'll, he's, he's got my backing anyway. Yeah, so he's certainly got mine as well, mate. Uh, you can't drop a player when he's putting in performances like that and a wicked deflection we had no chance on. Apart from that, um, it would have probably come away with another clean sheet. You know, yeah. if I'm being honest, and you, you know, going away anyway, but going away at Cambridge, and for me personally, and I don't mean it's disrespectful, but it felt like a loss, like a one with chance of what we missed. And it's a point, yeah. I get that, but you just look on art result, other results, what games did get played, you know, Rex and getting beat against Stockport. So again, it's like, and and don't get me wrong, it's not for other one to try and, you know, obviously the effort was here, it was unlucky. Any other day, like you said earlier, It'd have been three, four, one game that, yeah, but yeah. it just won't to be. So you, you just descends down. You, you know, you don't get your heads down. It's a point away. We should have won it. You know, Lord averages. We, you know, we we could have got a deflection and gone in, but unfortunately we didn't. But you're looking at two games coming up, like the next two games coming up, Ryan, both on Wigan and Reading. So again, two big, big games coming up, mate. Yeah, uh, and we'll do a video for that. But again. We're not asking it by any stretch of imagination. I think it's just a bit deflating. And probably for players as well, to be fair, because they were getting it the all. And I'm looking at players at, at, at full time and they look dejected. They look like down because, you know, they, in back of their minds, we're thinking, well, I, I've not come away of here with three points. Absolutely. I, I, you know, I, th I think I think it's fair to say we've probably played worse this season and come away with three points. True. Sure. <laughs> yeah, true, mate. Yeah, you true. Know, so it's, it, it, must have been, it must have been a bit deflating for them. But... You know, we come out of ground. Our Aussie were a bit, our Aussie were a bit upset. You know, mm. he, he were he, he were a bit angry. He likes to get it off his chest, bless him, when he when he, when he's not happy. Yeah, you know, <laughs> he, about, has, he has about ten about. fifteen minutes before we get back to the car. Then he, he blows himself out, and then he's done. Especially yeah. especially about the Stockport beating beating Wrexham. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it were an opportunity, but we've gained a point on Wrexham. Listen, it it was a bit frustrating. You know, it were a, it were a six hour round trip to get there and back. It it were a full day job for me because our Aussie had football in the morning. In we were playing at Pontefract away. Mm. Literally got jumped straight in car from Pontefract and drove straight to ground, drove, drove straight to, uh, to to Cambridge and got there just just after three o'clock. So it was a long day, but you know, and it would have been great for to come home with three points. But I weren't too deflated, mate. I weren't too deflated because mm. I think the performance was there. If I'd have gone there, and it'd have been a really drab, boring one nil. Yeah, yeah, fair one, play. Yeah, yeah, you take that. Drab, boring one one. <coughs> and, you know, yeah. and, oh God, that were rubbish. It's it, it weren't you know it was just a bit it was just frustrating that's all that we didn't come more away because yeah. we more we more than played you know we played more than well enough mate to to, to win that game and yeah. win and win it comfortably as well to be fair yeah, yeah. so but I'll, I'll give I'll give Cambridge a deal they defended really well after set times you know I'm not I'm not going to sit there and say that Cambridge were, were rubbish and we, we I just thought we were a better team in second half mm. and um and and should have won and should have yeah. won. You just want to be. Is it yeah. is it a cursed pink kit? I don't yes. Know, mate. Yeah, per yes, yeah. It is, absolutely. Cursed pink kit, right? <laughs> We've come to official. Leave it's, your like comments. Green, it's like that green kit from the season we got oh, earlier. Yeah. Yeah. Although it was a nice kit, we didn't we didn't win a single game in it every time no. we won. We didn't win a single game in it all season. So I think right, let you know in comments below. That's it for pink kit now. We don't want any more pink kits, please. It's a curse. It's not uh, it's not helping his cause. I've never been a massive fan of wearing. You know what I mean? If 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 there's no if there's no color clash, you should be wearing your own colors for me. Yeah, like colors used to be. Yeah, there's no, there were no reason why we couldn't have worn red yesterday. That's there's it, no yeah. reason why we couldn't have worn red. They're you know they're playing in clash know, with white, orange, and black. There's yeah. no color clash. Or we could have played in grey. Yeah. That, uh, sometimes when I see kits, you know, then you bring them out. And you go, I'm not so sure about that one. Then eventually it grows on you. Missing growing. Growing. No. It's, 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 it's awful. <laughs> yeah. 
So and, please, uh, please, please. Can we not wear it anymore? Can we not wear we it anymore? We've, we've, we've done it for three times and it's not worked. So can we just like retire that and, you know. Retire that and wear a Thank you. <laughs> uh, as always, Ryan, it's been a pleasure, mate. Please leave your comments below as well about the score, the performance, the players. I mean, my man at match and like what we said in the quality, absolute revelation when he came yeah. on, uh, yeah. passing and that. Uh, but yeah. Uh, it's not been a great weekend, but, you know, Wrexham lost, so we've gained a point, like Ryan said. So, just send it down. Two big home games coming up, Wigan and, and uh, Reading. <sighs> let's see if we can get back to winning ways. Oh, well, let's pick some more points up and let's get further up that league. Uh, have a great weekend. Ryan, always a pleasure. Yeah, One well. thing left to say, we only can do. You Reds. <laughs>